guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel, CD's Automotive Garage, and well, today, tonight, before the sun goes down, we are actually going to finally fix this 1994 Chevrolet S10 Blazer, four-wheel drive, 4.3, it's got the CPI 4.3, very, very most common for the spider injection failure. Well, guess what? Today's video, we're going to be just fixing just that. All right, so to get this started off, I have pretty much bought everything to do the injectors. Uh, first of all, the injectors themselves. AutoZone, not a sponsor. Everything all together was probably around over 300 bucks. Uh, I know at least there's a part number somewhere. I'll try that one. are they're all wrapped up three on this side three on that side but they have to go in order you can't mix them up and you do have to return the core meaning the old set that's in this has to come out go in this box take it back to the store and you get your hundred dollars back for the old set and here is the intake manifold gasket MS95818 I think it was like 11 or 12 bucks but everything is going to be different because commercial count. Um, here is two EGR valve gaskets because they didn't know which I didn't know which one that I had. I believe it could be this one or this one. It don't I don't know. I don't know until I get it off. I am gonna go ahead and go through the EGR valve while I got the intake manifold off because <clears throat> with the upper part gone, you can actually access the two bolts. So the EGR valve, pull it off, clean it, put it back on, put a new gasket on it while I'm in there. Might as well. And that's very common for those to clog up and cause issues. And months of other things, I went ahead and bought both coolant temperature sensors. One's a temperature sensor and one is a temperature switch. You have to make sure you know which one's which. Alright, so I know a lot of people have commented in the videos in the past where I've done these S10s. And this is the same for the 2.8 and the 4.3. And this 4.3, they're, they're all the same. But this part number here, if the camera would focus. Alright, TU152. That one is the switch. Okay. It has, um, it actually has two connect the uh, male side uh, prongs inside that stick up. But you're only using one out of this when you plug it up. So I always call this the one pin connector because that's really all you're using. And that guy is located on the passenger side block most of the time. On the four threes, it's the passenger side. Um, right here is the connector. And it's broken off. I've already got a new one for it. But right down here right here is the sensor and the connector for that guy is there 838 is the, is the uh, part number try that one too but uh, it was like 13 bucks got another one of those and then the other one which is your temperature sensor for the ECM there's this guy has a two prong connector. You can see the inside are different. You will not mix these up because they plug up different. The connectors are different. Here's the part number for that guy. And it is SU109. It's like $21 for that sensor. Now on this 43, it is actually located the bottom down here. You may not be able to see it until I get the intake off. It's actually straight underneath the EGR valve. And I'll show you that when I get it all tore apart. Because I'm going to replace it too while I've got it apart. Might as well. Now hopefully, I should have said this earlier, you can hear me over the fan because it is way too exhausting out here today. It's like 95 degrees. It is hot. And not only that, there's a bunch of flies and gnats flying into my face and mouth. So that's, you know, that's pleasant. We take the intake pose off 
So we can get this whole other thing out of the way. This is a brand new boot, by the way. I've already replaced it. Very common for failure. As you're pulling this up, be very careful because you've got the air sensor, temperature sensor right here. You've got to unplug it. Just push the tab back and pull down. Once you do that, the whole thing just comes out of its way. You just throw that on the ground. Alright, so now you get the intake piece out of the way is what I want to call it. You unplug the sensor. Now you're going to have to start unplugging all the other sensors. First of all, you need to take this throttle cable off. Like so, take a flathead screwdriver, pry against it this way and it pops it right off. It's not hurting it. It'll pop right back on. Then, you've got that our control valve. Push that. Unplug that. And you got the TPS, the position sensor. Unplug that. Unplug the map sensor. Put that to the side. Now you gotta get this top cover piece off, which is a T25 Torx bit. Okay, well now you get the cover out of the way, just slide this guy out from under, PCB valve. Lay it to the side. Same thing with the other one. Lay it to the side. You gotta unplug this. I forget what this sensor's called, but we gotta take it out before we take the intake off. You don't want to destroy it. It has like a little flapping door valve inside that turns for the ports inside the intake. Okay, now T15 takes this guy out. back and forth. It's got like an o-ring on it. And pull up. Just like so. See what I meant? Just lay that to the side. Next thing you want to do, take this. There's one, two, and then you got three. This one's a 10 millimeter. This one and this one is an eight or a five sixteenths. Same thing. Unscrew those, take this bracket assembly off, got to get that out of the way. Then we got to take this piece of view valve, hose off, it's probably going to break. No, well, maybe not. But it does have some cracks in it, so I might want to replace that while I'm in here. Move that to the side. <coughs> so, next thing you want to do is, another thing, one tip I like to give you is whenever you're doing a lot of this on big jobs, and you don't want to remember, or you can't remember where all the bolts go, Take the bolts that you take out after you remove the bracket assembly, for instance. Put the bolts back in here and screw them halfway in so you don't lose them. Now you know where they go. You know where this goes. So you just take them back out, put this back on. You don't have to worry about which bolts are longer or shorter, whatever, or wherever they go. That's pretty much what I like to do. Uh, you still have the transmission cable, kick down cable. So it wraps around. It's hard to do with one hand. But it wraps around. It should. Hope I can catch that. See how it pops into its side? Just like that. It actually slides into that hole straight across and locks in and comes back up this way. So now you can just take this bracket and set it to the side. Another thing too, go ahead and disconnect the battery. Don't leave the battery plugged up when you're doing this job. Because there's a lot of things you're unplugging and a lot of metals that are touching each other. And you're going to be messing with fuel. Alright, the next thing you want to do is take out the 10 bolts, if I'm not mistaken. There is one, two, three. There's one back straight down here. Four, five, six. Right here there's a stud. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Take those out. They're all ten millimeter. Uh, this one actually has two nuts and a bracket, so you gotta loosen these the top two nuts, take the bracket out of the way, and then get to the bottom nuts and hold the intake on. Alright, for this one in the back, you're gonna have a little tough time. I had to use a 3 8 style deep ten millimeter socket and extension to get to the stud that's back here on the back. 
with a 10 on it. Man, it's horrible. As you can tell, it's really, really long. Uh, the rest of them I use quarter inch, and it got them all fine. But the very back one, like I said, you're gonna have to have this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I don't have any mini tools with me. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, but to keep up with where the bolts go, because some are longer, some are shorter, some are different, whatever. I'm gonna take this gasket out because I'm gonna have to use it anyway and use this cardboard as a template to make where the holes go just like the intake's made. So if a bolt hole goes here, I'm gonna put it here. Next one goes here, next one goes over here, one back here, you get the what I'm trying to say. And so that way I know exactly where every bolt's supposed to go when I go put it, put it back together. All right, see what I'm talking about? So I don't mix them up. Now there's two that goes here, but those two, which is this one and this one are just, uh, two 10 millimeter nuts that look like this they go on and I can't put those in the cardboard but I know where they go so just undo the bracket assembly now that all the bolts are out the intake should pop right up without much force well I say that but it ain't working let me check and make sure there's no bolts left a little persuading and a hammer this got it. I forgot something. A brake booster hose goes to the back of the intake. It's got to come off. Okay, so now you got to take the injectors out. There is two prongs as you see right there. You squeeze them both together and then easily wiggle them back and forth as pulling them up and pulling them out of the port holes. Each one of them like that. But if you were me, I would take pictures of every way these injectors are routing because you cannot mix them up. Uh, the new one is not routed the same way this one is. So I'm going to take a picture of how it's routed before I remove them and then undo them. you got to remove this clip right here that's on top of this fuel line. Remove it. And those lines pop right out of that whole injector simile. Alright, so been a little update here. This is uh, day two. I'm doing this about a few days later because, well, trying to find two parts that I wasn't going to replace, but I ended up having to do so. And that is <clears throat> the two fuel line supply lines that come into the intake right here are hairline cracked and I mean really bad that you can actually see it right here through camera without me zooming in but those cracks like that that is not going to be long before that sucker breaks and it probably leaks right here at this crack if I had to guess and that's not good because if it leaks well two of couple things here one you're gonna mix oil with gasoline which is never good for the bottom end of the bearings uh, the other one is it could blow up because this intake is severely hot fuel leaks inside of here and poosh it goes so I mean it, I'm not kidding when I say this guys I really do appreciate Napa for having these cuz and I'm not a sponsor by this no but by no means but it took me forever to find these lines. I'm not kidding. It was like, just, I went to several parts stores, tried Rock Auto. Rock Auto was out of stock. I tried other things, you know, nobody could get them. Amazon seemed to show to have it, but I wasn't going to wait a week or two for it to come in. 
you know, and then it ended up having a delay or something like that. So <clears throat> Napa came in for me. Like I said, not a sponsor. There's the part number for it right there, 700 2370. These were $85 for these two lines. The plastic, they're known to crack, known to break. I got this apart. I don't want it to mess up, so I'm going to put these on. And uh, <clears throat> they come with new O-rings and everything because of the little screw bolt. comes with the uh, little uh, clip to hold it in. So back here in the very back, right here in the middle, about a finger or so down, there's a Torx head bolt screw that goes into the back of the intake, which is right there that holds this on, holds the bracket on. Once you remove the bracket, then <clears throat> you can actually pull the lines outward this way. They both go out this way. Um, make sure, of course, you know, the fuel pressure is released, but I got to break these two lines loose there and there to get it out. And so I had to go to the parts store, or not the parts store, but Harbor Freight because I didn't bring tools with me. You know, like I said, I'm out of town doing this job for other reasons. And, well, so I bought this because you got to have line wrenches to take that off and you strip the line. I don't know how long it's been on there. It probably looks like a factory. This thing only has 190,000 miles on it. So another problem is the main harness connector for the injector. The little grommet was missing, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I don't know if I dropped it in intake. I don't believe I did. I'm gonna look back in the the uh, film before this and check, but I don't believe I did. So I had to pick up another one of those. And there's the part number for that guy. They call it the harness connector for the injector. I don't know why they call it that, but that's just what they call it. And right there's what I needed, just the rubber grommet. I had to buy a whole connector just for the rubber grommet. It is what it is. So I'm going to take that guy, put it on there so it'll have that. <clears throat> I went to junkyards, tried to find this. Everybody either cut the uh, ends right here when they took the throttle bodies off of them. Or they removed these grommets that I was trying to find. So there was no luck there. Alright, so I got it out. It's a little bit of a pain, but I got it. The uh, Torx bit screw, it comes with a new one in the kit. But I'm going to go ahead and use it just because. Um, let's see here. What's that going to... Okay, so this guy right here. The Torx bit screw is a T27 size the lines are kind of a pain when you unbreak when you break these lines loose and you get them out you kind of have to push the lines back it's kind of hard but you got to push them back uh, enough and it's kind of you know stiff as could be there's not much wiggle room you can't mix these lines up just remember how they came in and go out um, your feed line of course is the right side your return line is the left side so you can't mix them up I'm gonna go ahead and pull these o-rings up here and here with a little bit of oil and then pop it right back in its spot put the bracket back on it it's got a new bracket and a new screw all right so those are back installed I do however have to go back to the parts store or Riley's or even maybe Harbor Freight and buy a o-ring kit for the o-ring because the o-ring on the end of the screen ripped and that's going to leak so I can't have that. So now it's time to line up the old injectors <clears throat> pretty much exactly how they're routed to go to each cylinder is how you have to do it on the new one. You cannot mix them up or it won't run right. So uh, it's pretty simple. This one far left goes to the front. The middle one goes to the middle hole and the far right one goes to the far back. Uh, this side's a little more, more tricky. You have the very bottom to the far back. Then you have the very top to the left goes to the middle injector and then the far right one goes to the right injector to the front. So I'm pretty much going to repeat that process to the, put the other injectors in. Make sure you put some oil on the O-rings right here before you pop those in so it doesn't leak, it doesn't break the O-ring. 
All right, day three of doing this again. So I don't remember exactly what I showed you last, but the spider injector is installed. It's pushed down. There's nothing that holds it in, really. Uh, you pretty much have to push this part in first, then route your injectors to each uh, port inside the intake. Just make sure that they go in and they lock in which these have, they're not coming back out. So I'm hoping, if that's normal, that uh, these wiggle up and down like that. I mean, I've never never messed with these, so I don't really know if that's normal or not, but I'm pretty sure, you know, maybe it is. The uh, clip is back on to hold these lines in. The uh, trickiest part was getting <clears throat> the uh, C-clip piece right here that holds these two lines in the back of the intake. Uh, and then putting that Torx head screw back into a spot. But the uh, feed, feed line is put in, it's not tightened yet. The um, line right here, gnats were horrible again today. Um, the O ring busted. So I had to go to O'Reilly's today and get some O rings for it. I don't know which size, so I got a bunch of them because I don't feel like running back and forth to the parts store a million times. You can see how small and it ripped. So hopefully what I got will work. We'll find out. Alright, so here's what I got. From O'Reilly's. It's a couple of cents. I think they were like a dollar and something each. I got like a variety box that they can open and give you, but hopefully this will work. If it don't, you know, then I've got a few others in this baggie that I bought from them, but um, I'm going to turn the key over after I get everything put together like this and make sure there's no leaks before I put the intake back on. Because you can't really get to those lines at the back of the intake back there with the intake on. There's not really much room. It's too tall and too thick. Just make sure you lubricate this really good with oil before you put it on or when you put it on so it doesn't rip it when you're trying to torque it down. But you got to be careful when you tighten these lines. Um, yeah, just be careful when you tighten these lines or you'll rip the O-ring. Alright, so uh, <coughs> all that stuff's put back together. Uh, I haven't tested it just yet, so I'm going to do that in just a second. But meanwhile, while that's together went in and pulled the EGR valve off and there's nothing wrong with it. The valve goes up and down like it's supposed to. It's not stuck, but it is a little dirty. I'm going to clean it out with some brake cleaner, carb cleaner, and throw a new gasket on it, clean it up, put it back on, and it should be good to go. Um, go out and get your ex's toothbrush and use that to clean it. I'm just kidding, actually, about that. But, yeah. Take a toothbrush, clean it inside the ear really good with some brake cleaner, and then it should be good to go. Alright, so it is this gasket right here for this EGR valve. There's the number. My hands are shaking. That's the gasket. <clears throat> here is the one that came off. And it's had it. I'm not going to reuse that. A lot of people would say, I'll oh, just, you know, put some RTV on it and use it. No. This is clean now. The valve moves up and down like it should. I've already went ahead and replaced the coolant temperature sensor for the ECM. Uh, that's all done. Here's the old one that came out. All nasty and oily. Inside of the male prongs look a little wet, so it probably leaked a little bit. So at least we'll have that done. That's another thing that could cause this thing to have issues. You know, there's a lot of things that could be going on here, but I'm numbering them already out because I've already got the intake off, so I might as well just do it. So uh, now I'm gonna put the EGR valve on and then hook up the battery and just prime it and check for leaks before I put the whole intake back on. All right, first time priming it, just turn it on the key. You can actually see the fuel. Uh, coming through the lines that's really awesome and cool just thought I wanted to show you that turn on the key again prime it again make sure there's no leaks all right well I primed it primed it probably like four or five times and I don't see any leaks and uh, it seems to be good 
So, I guess now that the uh, HR valve's done, coolant temperature sensor's done, I'll lay the new gasket on it, and uh, finish buttoning this up back up. Alright, so the gasket's laid on. I had a tough time of getting the whole injector assembly to fit all the way flush. Because there's a gasket seal underneath this gasket here that came with this spider injection. Um, and that was a pain to push it all the way down. I had to take a, uh, like a really soft rubber hammer and very lightly tap it to, you know, make sure it's flush all the way down. It's still not completely flush as you can tell the gasket doesn't go all the way down but I'm hoping with this heavy intake that all this weight and when everything's tightened down that it will actually push it down uh, I don't know but I can get it down in there any farther than that so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the intake on real quick and see what happens Man, it's horrible. Okay. So the intake is installed. It is torqued down to spec by my hand. Uh, I think it's like, it's really low uh, torque specs, but you can look it up in the uh, Chevy S10 uh, owner's manual. I mean, not owner's manual, but the uh, book that you can get, Payne's manual. <clears throat> anyway, everything's put back together. I gotta hook up the battery. I'm going to leave this sensor unhooked. It ain't going to hurt it. It's just the air temperature sensor. It'll run. It may check as check engine light code, but that's not a big deal. I'll plug up the throttle position sensor. Map sensor. Tight fit. I don't have control valve. Which I have cleaned before, so I know it's clean. Throttle plate's clean. Um... EGR valve, coolant temperature sensor, all the sensors are put back, the diverter valve, I don't know, I was thinking that's what this is called. The little gasket seal that goes here, as you can see, is melted, so I went and got one from the junkyard that'll slip over that. Alright, that's better. A little bit of a really, really snug fit, maybe I had done that backwards. Yeah. That should work. Alright, so as far as I know of, I've not forgotten anything. Everything's plugged back up like it should be. The oil is full. Of course, it was to begin with. I just want to make sure uh, everything seems to be tightened. So, uh, get these tools out of the way real quick and then try to fire it up, see if it runs again with new injectors and everything else. I'm hoping. Alright, I'm nervous, but uh, I guess let's give it a whirl and see what the heck happens to it, huh? Go rev it up from the inside since the end takes off. I don't want it to backfire in my face. Still kind of uh, cutting up when you give it gas, but it could be this little guy right here not being hooked up.
pound. As sketchy as that was. Alright, let's see if it'll move out of its own power now. One tire is slow, but I just want to see if the daggum thing will move. Because every time you try to give it gas or move it, it just cut out and die. And it's never ran this long so far. So, we'll see. It moves. Well, there you go. It's back together. It is done, at least for this job. Um, there's something else going on with it now that I got it running. There's a ticking noise in the bottom end. You can hear it. If I had to guess, sounds like time and chain. It's only got 190,000 miles. I'm really shocked that it would be that. That's what it sounds like. Sounds like time and chain's banging against the uh, timing cover once the oil thins out and gets hot. But. It's got dough exhaust, cherry bombs. True dough exhaust. We get some fuel for it, put some sea foam in the tank, put some maybe some 93 in it, clear out some of that soot that's been sitting in there for who knows how long. Yeah, it does need some fuel. Oil gauge, I was told, is not registering right. Uh, as you can tell, the temp the uh, battery voltage is wrong, and of course, I've not fixed the temperature gauge yet. But it's stuck in four wheel drive, into like brake lights on. I gotta figure that out too. But other than that. It uh, sounds good. All right, guys. Well, that's going to conclude this video. I hope this helps out for whatever repair you were needing. Uh, whatever I showed, I hope it helps out. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the bottom. I'll try my best to get to them, as always. And I'm sure there will be more content on this blazer, fixing other things that it needs. And uh, as always, like, share, subscribe. Have the notification bell on, so every time I upload, you get the notification. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay tuned. It's been a couple of days. Let's see if it'll start. Yeah, fix that.
transferring. And it actually has true duals with separate glass backs and separate pipes, everything running back. So this side's misfiring. So it's this side of the engine block is misfiring. One of the three plugs are not firing right or something else because the cap and rotor look new and I replaced the niche control module. Uh, the little square piece that goes underneath the distributor cap. And I replaced that. So either got a bad coal. Because I've seen a, a ignition coil go bad on one of these and it caused a misfire. Or one of the plugs or wires is messed up on this side. The other side's burning clean. But it's definitely not right. All right, when you rev it up, it still don't change none. It's still misfiring, so it's got a dead miss on this side. Either the spider injector I installed has got some issues, or, like I said, there's a bad plug or wire on this bank, this specific side. Uh, maybe ignition call. I could try popping one of those in here and see what happens, but I don't know. I'll find out. And it does throw out a little bit of blue smoke out of this side. Still kind of cutting up a little bit too. All right, so I got it up on ramps after the test drive. Now <clears throat> it's been sitting here for probably 10 minutes or so, 15 at the most. I've got a uh, coolant leak on this side the same side the misfire is on but it's in the front area i was thinking the fuel the uh water pump but i tried looking down through here it's somewhere like where the thermostat housing is uh going down <clears throat> you can see in there it's kind of wet but i can't trust that because it's kind of oily too at the same time uh usually when these leak usually it's on the uh I mean, not driver's side, the passenger side. Usually when they leak, uh, the water pumps, usually it's the passenger side that you see the coolant go down, the uh, uh, radiator hose or the uh, crankshaft pulley. Yeah, man, oh man, do I have my work cut out for me. You can see the coolant now leaking on the bottom. It leaks on this side, power steering pumps on this side, <clears throat> down the block somewhere onto the uh, tie rod end it goes all the way across the bar and then onto the transfer case to dripping from here down on the ground so I don't I can't really get you in there without getting the camera all messed up but uh, I gotta figure out where that's coming from uh, apparently that just started because I've checked the coolant every time and it's never leaked or never went down so uh, we got an issue somewhere. <clears throat> I'm guessing either a freeze plug, it could be still the water pump, or the uh, thermostat housing or something like that. I really don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. There's so much crap in the way that's being four-wheel drive. Uh, that do have my work cut out for me. The transmission line, cooler lines right there that go all the way to the back of the transmission uh, to the front of the radiator are completely gone, uh, rust. Everything under here doesn't look too great, but, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's been sitting, and this thing is from West Virginia, so it's going to have some rust. <clears throat> but uh, I can replace the lines. It's not a big deal, especially right there. It gets a little crusty, and then right through here. The last thing you want is uh, one of those suckers busting and getting on the uh, dual exhaust. As you can tell, it's true dual exhaust. One pipe comes from here goes back through a cat to the glass pack and then out same for the other side well I believe I might have found the leak way up in there you can kind of see where it's wet um, I can actually see where the uh, water pump mounts to the block with the two bolts on this side it's actually wet underneath so the gaskets probably failed or whatever and I'm not going to just pull it off and just put new gaskets on and put it back on if that's what it is. I'm just going to replace the whole water pump because it's a big deal to get to it. And 
I'd rather just put a new one on it for 20 to 50 bucks. So, well, it's not that bad. I can always send down the frame, primer it, paint it. You know, I can replace those cooler lines. I'm sure they make an aftermarket kit you can buy for Summit or Jags or somewhere or something. If not, heck, I'll just go to the junkyard and find another one of these with the same setup and pull the hard lines off of it that are in good shape because I did that for my S10 and it worked out fine. I tried the aftermarket ones. You can make yourself from AutoZone and they leaked like a sieve. So, uh, yeah, I won't go that route. But anyway, I'm going to fire it back up one more time. It was still misfiring because it wasn't misfiring when I first fired it up cold. After it got hot, that's when everything started running funny. Wow. Still misfiring. Interesting. Hmm. Well, for now, I think it's going to do it. I just want to go ahead and conclude this last little clip for y'all. I know, I know there was probably some of you as well as I like to see stuff like this at the very end of test drives and what happens after the repairs are fixed. So, any questions or comments, leave them in the bottom. I'll try my best to get to them as always. And uh, I'm sure there'll be more content on this Blazer because, well, there's a lot more things that need to be fixed. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like, share, follow. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.